Ladies and gentlemen, I am your still. Damn it. Wait, Justin Gabriel is coming out with CM Punk, the Money in the Briefcase winner? Hello, John. Funny seeing you here. Um, you see, I'm, I'm here because, well, I, I want to be a champion one day, and why not learn from the best in the world, CM Punk? See, I've made the decision already. I know what championship I want to go after. But I'm going to wait for my right opportunity, my right moment to claim it. And CM Punk, he's graciously told me that he is going to help me. CM Punk is going to put aside all of his, his ego, his, his self-righteousness. He's going to put it all aside and help me, the young superstar Justin Gabriel, to my upper echelons of greatness and become the WWE Champion. It's amazing, John. It's amazing. It's great. CM Punk, tell him. Tell him. That's right, John. That's right. You're right. You were right the whole, the whole time that we had with each other. The whole, all those arguments, all those petty differences we had. You were right. I'm not the best in the world. But that's okay because I feel like I can make someone the best in the world. If I can't be best in the world, then I'm going to create it. I am going to let... Justin Gabriel replace me on the mantle of best in the world. I'm going to mentor him into becoming the champion. And he's not going to be a stupid champion. No, not like the dumb John Cena. Not like the one who would easily fall into Chris Jericho's plans on last Friday's Smackdown. It was laughable, John. You really expected Chris Jericho to be your friend? Absolutely ridiculous. His plan worked to a T. Because here you are, John. A weakened state. And I'm here. With the money in the briefcase winner. Go figure. Me and him are going to become great friends in the coming months because I'm going to mentor him to take that championship away from you. I've been the best in the world for 433 days before. I've done it. I've seen it all. Why be the best in the world when I can be the best in all time? How do I do that? By creating another best in the world, and another best in the world, and another, and another. So Justin Gabriel starts this chain of dominoes, John. It's only a matter of time, because tick tock, your championship reign isn't going to last more than a couple of months. Justin Gabriel's gonna take it from you. And I'm gonna help him. Oh, oh, and by the way, John, you're not so chummy with the GMs these days like I am. FYI, you lose your championship at SummerSlam. I hear that there's gonna be a draft the night after. So, if you don't have that championship, there's nothing you tying you here to Monday Night Raw. Who's to say that you lose to Justin Gabriel here? And then you get kicked off the show the very next night. You see, John, it's perfect. I mean, I've tried destroying you using my kicks, my go-to-sleep. But that's not the way to get rid of you, John. Why not let you get rid of yourself? And that's what's going to happen in a month on this very show, four weeks from right now. The night after SummerSlam, when you, the loser of the previous night's match, is going to get drafted off of Monday Night Raw. <laughs> 30 days, John. Enjoy them while you can, because me and Justin here, me and Justin are going to plow right through you. John Cena looks livid after that announcement. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday Night Raw. Very explosive beginning there. John Cena coming out and being cut off as champion once again by CM Punk. And, and he's been cut off by many people in the past. John Cena has not had a lot of time to air his statements. He's just come out and wrestled matches. 
CM Punk coming out with Justin Gabriel earlier and, um, well, really laying down the law. He did say a spoiler, which is natural CM Punk. CM Punk's known for going off the cuff. He wasn't supposed to say that. And so if you caught it, there you go. But, um, um, he came out and he's going to mentor Justin Gabriel into picking the right opportunity to challenge John Cena for the championship. But that's interesting because later tonight, there's a number one contenders match for the WWE Championship. CM Punk may very well be the champion soon. So what is CM Punk's ulterior motives here, people? Or is CM Punk really turned the other cheek? Um, so all that and more a little later tonight. John Cena was extremely livid about that. You did hear CM Punk announce that the night after SummerSlam, there is going to be a huge epic draft. There is going to be five superstars from each brand changing places. Absolutely, totally random. We're going to be using the hat technology to help us get through that little... Um, snuff but but I, it's just going to change the landscape of the whole universe mode <coughs> it's something that's going to happen and um the only people safe are the champions cm punk was correct in being in saying that if if john cena was not champion the night after SummerSlam, he's not safe of still being a part of this brand so ladies and gentlemen we have dean ambrose taking on jack swagger in this ring Dean Ambrose lost his match against Kurt Angle last night. And Michael Cole actually is, a, cause, because he does the commentary in these matches, you can hardly hear him though. I'm the main commentator now. I'm the voice of the WWE. Um, but he does many interviews on the, on the new exclusive WWE app that you can download with just your fingertips. Um, they showed a... <laughs> They showed a demo of how to do it on Rod and I, and it made me laugh. But if you get that, then you can see all these sneak previews. And you actually did catch the interview with Dean Ambrose during the commercial break from the opening promo to this match. And um, I'm just going to play it now. I've got it right here. I'm going to play it. I'm going to put it right up to the mic so you can hear what Dean Ambrose had to say to Michael Cole as this match goes on. All right, I'm going to play it now. So we are off the air. We are going to this interview. Hello ladies and gentlemen of the WWE Universe, I am Michael Cole and I've got another exclusive interview with a loser of one of last night's Money in the Bank matches, Dean Ambrose. Dean, you lost to Kurt Angle, you must have some tough feelings tonight going into this match against another loser of Money in the Bank. Jack Swagger, what are your thoughts? <laughs> thoughts, Michael? Thoughts? Michael Cole, you think I've got thoughts? No, 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 I've got more than thoughts. I've got explanations. I've got resolutions. Revelations, Michael Cole. No one wants to see the truth, but last night I saw the truth. And even though Kurt Angle gained my respect last night by beating me in the middle of that ring and making me tap out, when I tapped out, I saw the truth of it all. I laid on the mat. I looked up. I looked up at the lights and I saw something there. And no, Michael Cole, it wasn't God. It wasn't God, Michael Cole. Get your head out of your ass. It was the revelation that I always knew to be true. That the army of heaven are not here to help you. They are not here to spread the wealth. They are not here to help the poor. They are here to do damage. Well, well, Dean Ambrose, um, my question to you is what damage have they caused? You seem to be their only target, and that's only because you've tried to get in their way. What damage has the Army of Heaven really caused? <laughs> Michael, you don't... You, you, you don't have a sixth sense like I do, Michael Cole. You don't have the sixth sense that I do. True, they haven't done any damage yet, but in chess... No one does any damage in the opening move. You move your knight out. You move your pawn two spaces forward. No one does opening damage in the opening move. They're setting up their pieces. They're getting their ducks lined up in a row. And they're going to shoot them all down one by one. And I wouldn't be surprised if I'm on that list. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if you're on that list. <laughs> I could go on. But you won't listen to me. 
No one will listen to me. So, in the same sense that Kurt Angle beat knowledge into me last night when I tapped out, I'm going to do the same thing to the people who won't listen to me, and that tonight it's going to start with Jack Swagger. It's going to start with him. Hopefully, when I beat him and he lays on that mat for three seconds and I get my hand raised in the air, he's going to realize that what I say is true and that the army of heaven, they are not good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and that concludes the interview, that exclusive interview on the WWE app. Dean Ambrose was very adamant that the Army of Heaven are not here to help us, but but I'm agreeing with Michael Cole. What have they really done that is so bad? Even when they did a bounty system on Dean Ambrose, the bounty system went to charities that are very, very well-known. Uh, very well-known charities. Be, uh, Be a Star Alliance got a, a chunk of the money. Breast Cancer Awareness got a br big chunk of the money. It's it's uh, They've done amazing things since they've been here. And I'm... In the in, under the assumption that Dean Ambrose is kind of, you know, we know that them pretending to be angels is insane, Dean Ambrose. We know that. But what we don't know is that they're doing something evil. <coughs> the Army of Heaven have done absolutely nothing wrong so far. And, and I'm actually, even as crazy as they are, I'm applauding their good deeds. They've done a lot of good in the world. As Dean Ambrose hits the knee trembler to, to Jack Swagger, Jack Swagger getting his lights knocked out, one, two, three, and there you go, Dean Ambrose claimed that he was going to pin Jack Swagger, one, two, three, and he did, and I, I guess Jack Swagger is now going to absorb some sort of knowledge, you know, Dean Ambrose is starting to sound a little more crazy than Kurt Angle, and Dumas, and Gabriel these days, the whole army of heaven, they, they seem to be making more sense than Dean Ambrose. What is going on in this topsy-turvy world? Dean Ambrose wins on his quest to educate us for some reason about the army of heaven. But ladies and gentlemen, have no fear. The army of heaven, they're doing good deeds. They're just kind of, you know, kind of insane, that's all. That's the only problem these guys have. All right, moving right along. I will tell them. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been contacted by the Lord. And he has told unto me that it shall come to pass that phase two of the plan is coming to fruition. It starts tonight. It's a big plan. Call it a red herring of sorts, because I'll be getting rid of all the monsters in this universe. And it begins tonight. Part two of this everlasting plan to ultimate salvation is called the cleansing. We must get rid of the evil that has plagued this universe. We must get rid of all of them for us to truly move forward as a people and to be graciously accepted by our Lord and Savior. I am Azrael and I will begin tonight. Thank you. Amen.